On this episode of Maritime Insights from a Deck Officer, how long does it take to offload 13,000 tons of carbon blocks? Let's calculate. Why are they only offloading two carbon blocks at a time? How are these uh, specialized uh, purpose-built trucks loading the carbon blocks? It looks like they are not offloading when it's uh, raining or when there is snow. So will this cause more delays? Has the uh, Thamesborg finished offloading and where is she going next? Where will she go into a dry dock? Here is another update on the Thamesborg that ran aground on September 6th in the Northwest Passage, has since been refloated on October 9th, and she docked in Bay Como, Canada on the 30th of October to start offloading her cargo of carbon blocks for the aluminum factory Alcoa in Bay Como. Now, I'll give you some interesting insights into the offloading of her cargo, and I'll show you the specialized purpose-built trucks that they use to transport the carbon blocks to the factory. I got video of the entire procedure, the uh, offloading and the loading, and you won't believe how they do it. So on the 30th of October, the Thamesborg finally docked in Bay Como to offload her 13,000 tons of cargo, and we will calculate uh, how long that will take to uh, get it off. But uh, we were fortunate enough that they did not dock at the usual dock where they go to for the aluminum plant, but uh, they have docked in Bay Como at a different dock, which has a public webcam. So from the beginning, I have been uh, watching this webcam. I know many of you guys have also been uh, watching this uh, webcam. She is still there, so I will post a link in the description down below so you can also have a look at the public webcam and see what's going on with the Thamesborg. Now, I took a whole bunch of screenshots since the 30th of October, and we can go through it a little bit so you can see uh, what has happened. But these are uh, the trucks that they are using, and then there's a whole bunch of forklifts, and obviously you have the cranes, and then you have the hatches that cover the hold. There's a forward hold and an aft hold, and they were open, sometimes the forward hold, sometimes the aft hold, sometimes both. So uh, we'll go through um, what we're going to see. Now, I'll tell you in a second how they are actually loading these trucks because it's quite genius how they do this. Here you can uh, see both holds are open, the forward hold and the aft hold. And they're using one crane in each to uh, offload the carbon blocks. Here you can actually see that it is uh, raining and they have uh, closed the hatches and closed the holds because uh, moisture is not good for anodes uh, because when uh, wet anodes are in the smelter, um, it causes uh, rapid steam generation and that can cause cracks and uh, that reduces the lifespan of the anodes and the uh, moisture also reduces the electrical conductivity, meaning moisture interferes with performance as well. So every time when there was uh, rain or when there was snow or any kind of moisture, they closed the hatches. And uh, as you can see, they were also continuing through the night. Here it's uh, 3.55 in the morning. This is all local time. They kept going and going. Here you can actually see that the ship is quite low uh, against the dock, but uh, you know there is a tide of about uh, one and a half to two meters. So um, it doesn't really give a good indication of how light the ship is because there is a tide going up and down. But uh, sometimes when it's at the highest tide, you can really see uh, that uh, she is getting lighter. And uh, for example, in this picture here, you can see there again working through the night and she's a little bit uh, higher on the dock and then here as well. So here they have all the hatches open, all the holes are open. Then they had some snow on the 11th of October in the morning and they stopped the uh, offloading uh, operations. And uh, this was from today and it looked like there was quite a lot of wind. Um, it also looks a little bit wet because there was snow. Uh, the snow has melted, but uh, it looked like there was also some rain coming and also some uh, snow and some wet snow. So uh, it looks like they halted operations again for that reason. Uh, it looks like she is not completely empty yet here in the back. 
And if we do a quick calculation, then we can see that I don't think they are quite done offloading because it takes quite a while to get this done. So I made a rough calculation about how long it takes for the uh, Thamesborg to be offloaded. Now, if you remember, the Thamesborg had 18,000 tons of carbon blocks on board uh, when she ran aground, but to get her refloated, they had to take out 5,000 tons, which means that there was a remaining 13,000 tons of cargo still in the ship. And um, on a, I estimated that one carbon block is about one ton. And I based that on the, uh, the, the size, the length and the width and the height of the carbon block. I looked at the forklifts, uh, how much they can take. And I looked at the trucks, how much they can take. So I think one block is about one ton. So two blocks is two ton. So for 13,000 tons, you need to do 6,500 total lifts with the crane to the dock. That's quite a lot, 6,500. But if you have two cranes, like they have been using the aft uh, crane for the aft hold and the forward crane for the forward hold, that uh, is uh, 3,250 lifts each. Now, if they take six minutes, then that's 325 hours. And uh, that would then take them 16 to 17 days. And that is with no delays. But realistically, like we have already seen with rain or with snow or with uh, truck delays or shift changes, you know, they cannot be up and running the whole time. So uh, a realistic time frame is more like uh, 20 to 25 days. And we are now, let's see, about 12 days in. So I think that it will probably take another week for them to uh, finish the offload. So I made a little video for you to show you how they load these uh, specialized uh, purpose-built trucks for the carbon blocks. Let's pay attention. The truck is coming and it is stopping. Now, once it's stopped, you can look at the trailer here in the front. It is actually moving down. I don't know if you can see it, but it is moving down, 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 down. First here forward it is moving all the way down. And then in the aft, you can see that it's going down as well. You see how the, the distance between the wheels and the, the trailer is getting less and less and less. So now it's all the way down. Now, so basically the trailer was lowered to the ground. Then he is moving forward and something comes out of the back of the truck. So it's kind of like a flatbed, you know, something that you uh, uh, can put on the ground and then you can put cargo on top. So. As you can see, the little forklifts are coming. They're gonna pick up the blocks that they put over here. And he's gonna take two blocks at a time. So two ton. And then uh, they are moving it. And he's moving it on the flatbed. So that's two. And then the other uh, forklift on the other side places uh, it on top. So. That's a stack of four carbon blocks. Then they go back, pick up some more, and they put them in front. Then they go, they make their way all the way to the truck, and that is five rows. So it's five rows of four thick. So that is 20 blocks in total. So when they all weigh one ton each, that is uh, 20 tons of weight. So they all stack them up and they continue. I'll, I'll go a little forward because uh, obviously, uh, as you can see, they stack him and 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 some more. All right, and then they have to be careful because then they are close to the truck. Then they're gonna load up that one and then one more. And then the truck moves backwards. I was like, oh, that's how they do it. Because I never saw them opening these covers or anything. So then it just backs up and then it hooks again in the flatbed. And then it lifts up the flatbed with the cargo on it. You will see it happening. Now here's the other truck coming in. So when that one leaves, it was, it, this one is already here. And you can see how different they look here in the back because that is what they um, lower to the ground and uh, raise up again. 
So you can see the truck is higher here in the front again. And you can also see that he is pumping up the distance here in the back as well. So the, the distance between the wheels and the trailer is going up. And then when it's uh, back in the up position, but now it has to really lift. I mean, it's 20 tons. So uh, that uh, takes a little bit longer than going down with no weight. The other truck is coming over here, almost ready. And as soon as this one is ready to go, the next truck is already there to uh, do the same thing all over again. So you can see it's all the way extended up and this is all the way extended up. So now it has picked up that 20 ton of carbon blocks and moves it to the factory. I thought it was cool. I've been looking so many times on this webcam and I was like, when are they gonna open up these covers? But they never did. This is how they do it. Quite genius. See how high they are? Yeah, that's uh, crazy. And then again, he does the same thing. He lowers the trailer and uh, it repeats. By the way, if you're enjoying my Maritime Insights so far and you're into shipping and uh, shipping news, then hit that like and subscribe button. Why is this important? Well, if you click like, more people on YouTube will also see this video, which will help grow the channel. Also, if you click subscribe, the channel continues to grow as well. And I will be able to continue my Maritime Insights for you. So if you're enjoying my videos so far, then click that like and subscribe button right now. What do you think? Is the Thamesborg empty right now as she sits right here? Or do you think she still has some offloading to do? Now you can see the bulbous bow coming out of the water here. Um, I think uh, her forward hold is probably pretty much empty. And uh, I think there is still some uh, cargo here in the aft hold that they need to take out when uh, the weather is okay and they can continue. And then of course the question, where is she going next? And uh, we will probably not find out before they set the AIS uh, to a new destination. So uh, I think we're all looking at her AIS every day to see if they update their destination. Um, and uh, that will help us determine uh, which dry dock that uh, she is going to for repairs. But uh, we will keep a close eye on that. Of course, I will update you guys once uh, there is news. To uh, not miss anything, make sure you click that subscribe button right now. And uh, also, if you want to see another video of mine, then uh, watch this video right over here. See you next time.